Caltech. Well, let me ask you, Balaji, how many minutes do you give me before the party closes? <laughs> Three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes. Uh, <laughs> Not three minutes to thank all these people that came all the way from Hong Kong, like Vince Lee, all the way for this. Thank you guys. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, for one thing, got, uh, Lisa caught me by surprise, and uh, since I'm only three minutes, no, you don't. It's, <laughs> no, it's incredible. I'm, so, I'm sorry for the voice. I probably called a few days ago, and I still haven't been able to say it. I don't feel like 60 years old. Uh, I don't know if it happens with you sometimes. From inside me looking at you, I feel more like 35. I know it's very difficult to understand that. And, uh, you know, Lisa says that, of course, I'm acting like 10. But, you know, the reality is, the reality is I feel, yes, the joints hurt a little bit. The cholesterol is a little bit higher. For the first time in my life, I'm taking pills for cholesterol. That bothers me. But uh, thank God when you have Katya and Alexi to take care of all the time, and of course Lisa, uh, it, it's really, it's, I mean, I hope I will be able to continue as actively. You're on my family and you don't understand it. And I'll tell you something which will understand also my preference to women graduate students, which nobody pointed out until now, and women undergraduate students. I come from a Greek and German family. They divorced very, very early. And the family had many professors in it, and I wanted to follow them. I didn't know why I became a professor, but it sounded like a good thing to do, since everybody else had been a professor. They divorced when I was nine years old, and I lived always with women in the house. I would see bras and panties everywhere. <laughs> there was never anything else in the house. Daddy, of course, kept seeing me rarely. But it was women, and my mother was a professor of French literature, and she was extremely influential. So really, when I became independent in 1976, I wanted to speak to, 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 to have women. I mean, why do you think there's this tremendous love for Jennifer Sinclair, for Christy Anson, for, for Barbara Eckert right now, for so many women? I love to see women succeed, because I think they remained suppressed in a European and an American system for so many years. And for me, it's the greatest pleasure to see Mariah Hahn doing so well. I know Mariah only because she was a former PhD student of Paul Niger. And I love what she's doing, I tell you. They are all my family, and I will continue doing it, and with my present graduate students and with so many others. I think about half of my students from Lucy. My God, Lucy was an incredible student. It was so nice to work with her. She was the first one in 1983. She got what, seven offers from universities, major universities, Yale, Michigan, and so on, which 25 years was really a major thing. And I'm so happy to see her again. I have so many people to thank. First, I want to thank the comedian. We thank Chris and Christy and Suri and Balaji and Zach and Tony. And of course, Tony Mikos. I mean, this is a very difficult party to put together. He does such a great job with all the things that you have done. I want to thank my mentors. I want to thank Ed Merrill. I wish he could be here with us tonight. On the 20th, on the 30th of August, he will be 85 years old. Unfortunately, the doctors are afraid that if he flies, something happens to his health. So he's not going to be, but he's going to be there in November to celebrate with us in the 100th centennial, or the 100th anniversary of ASCG. He's going to take the Excella and be down in Philadelphia. And, and, and it's going to be such a great opportunity for fun there because, I don't know if you know it, there are so many things happening in that meeting. Ed Merrill, like Bob Langer, like myself and many others, has been selected one of the 100 chemical engineers of the modern era. Whatever that means, for Ed, this is really such a great recognition. Uh, there is the highest award of ASCHE, and three of the four people that will get it this year it's the highest recognition, the founders of the world. I'm in the audience right now. Bob Langer, your speaker, and my very dear colleague and very dear friend, Dan Paul, who has done so much for me, so much for this department. In this department, we have somebody called John Maqueda, some of you know. He's 93 years old. He couldn't come here tonight because one of his grandchildren is getting married. He's going to be tomorrow at home. He will be there from 12 to 2. All those of you who are out of town, Come and see why this university is what it is. 
Can we see a man that if I didn't tell you that his age is 93, you would think that he's 70 years old? Can we see a man that calls every day the alumni to wish them happy birthday? He arrives there before all of us. And I want to imitate him. I told him, I didn't know how to say it explicitly, so I said, John, when you finally get tired, I'd like to take over and start calling the alumni myself. It's really an inspiration. This place, these two places have been so incredible for me. The chemical and the biomedical engineering department, they took me, they took Lisa and me uh, six years ago and they've given us everything. And we've done everything. I mean, last semester I had the largest group I've ever had in my life, 46 people. Uh, this is like a size group. I don't work like a size group, you know, but, but like it's now 120. He has five secretaries. He graduated 10 PhDs in June. I mean, I don't know. He does that. But it's so wonderful that all these people, they're my family. I love them. I, lo I love everybody that I have in my laboratory. It's so wonderful to have Brandon who asks you questions every day. And Omar, who does all the crazy things every day. And Diana, and Carolyn, and Maggie, and Marty, and so on. So really, it's such a wonderful place. The biomedical engineering department, Ken Diller is in the audience tonight. They have been so nice to me. It is because of them that I came down here. They were the first ones who asked me. Tremendous colleagues like Giorgio and uh, Keith Johnston and uh, all the young ones, Tom Truskin. Do you realize that in this department of chemical engineering, we have gotten four Colburn Awards? Now tell me which other chemical engineering department in the country has had four Colburn Awards. Tom Edgar, Keith, John, Keith Johnston, and more recently, of course, few years in a row, Lynn Liu and Tom Transkin. It's incredible to go out in the corridors and talk to those people. Now, there's going to be some other reason why we're going to be celebrating in uh, Philadelphia. This is getting the Chemical Engineering Practice Award, which is a major award for ASCHG. Recognizes all her work in, uh, in industry, uh, mostly in her own industry, her own companies. And recognizes, and of course, recently she became a fellow of the International Society of Biomaterials. So, really, this is another incredible opportunity because Lisa has been a great mother, has been a great partner, and at the same time, has been a great researcher and a leader. She was perhaps the youngest director of ASCHE at the age of 30 or 31, and the younger treasurer of the Contrary Society, and so on. Uh, I want to thank all of you. I don't want to put specific days, but it is so great to see Richard Korsmeyer and Lucy Hare laughed at that time. I mean, this goes back 30 years. I'm sorry that Todd Gare and Bill Bassing are not here. They were the ones who started the laboratory at 76. Both of them became major leaders. Todd Gare is now chief of uh, nephrology at uh, Virginia Commonwealth. And Bill Bassing is vice president of BP in Singapore. A really great guys, but then there was a hiatus of two years in 1978, as I had promised my mother, I decided to return to Greece. I was only 29 years old, that's why I didn't have many students. If you see, there are not many students from the period 76 to 79. I applied at the National Technical University in a very nice procedure, very, very proper. The document I still have it, and I was looking at it the other day, 120 page minutes of the faculty to decide whom they hire. They didn't hire me. It didn't bother me that they didn't hire me. I was 29 years old. 30 years ago, the, the Greek system was very hierarchical. What bothered me is Professor Pandeka, who said, the reason that he publishes a lot because he wants to become a professor at the National Technical University. And once he becomes a professor, then he will stop publishing. Well, I thank Professor Pandeka and whoever else wrote these minutes for doing this service to me. If it weren't for them, I would be now a middle-aged, balding, complaining, smoking Greek <laughs> in an apartment in a smoky city like Athens, complaining that I had nothing to do. Instead, I have all of you. And it's really incredible. In nice. September of 78, you know what happened. I took six, seven students, including people like Lucy, and then Richard a little bit, and many others that you didn't see today. 
In 82, I went to sabbatical in Geneva, that was another change. Already with Richard, we started doing the first control release. In 82, in Geneva, I learned pharmacy. I started learning pharmacy. As I tell Vince and Kila, I have never really learned pharmacy. And anybody in the audience who is not a pharmaceutical scientist who says, I know pharmacy, is really not telling us the truth. It's very difficult to learn pharmaceutical sciences. But Robert Gurney and the others really taught me. We came back in 83, we had another major group. You met them, you met many of them. And then in 88, another group. Every time I was going to sabbatical, I was coming back with great new ideas. Now, this was the days, of course, that I was not married. Lisa came to the laboratory in 84. The relation was never really particularly pleasant. Uh, especially it became very unpleasant in 1987, when I interviewed at Columbia as head of the department, I came back, I called everybody else in my office and I said, I'm considering going to Columbia. John Clear was the only one who said, of course I'm coming with you, no problem, New York is from East Coast. Uh, Lisa said, are you really leaving? Tell me tomorrow morning I'm leaving and going to another profession. Anyway, I'll tell you a little story and then I will conclude with something more current. Uh, in 1987, it's a story about how Lisa and I met, which I think very, very few of you know. In November of 1987, uh, American Airlines had a special campaign, and it said, uh, you can get a free ticket uh, for 30,000 miles to Europe, or, uh, no, excuse me, a free ticket to Europe for 30,000 miles and $400, or two free tickets for 100,000 miles, something like that. So I thought about it, well, two tickets is better because I don't have to pay the $400. <laughs> Who comes with me next to, to buy? I mean, I'm not throwing away the second ticket. So I went to meet Tony Nicholson. I said, Tony, would you like to go with me to Paris in mm -hmm. November? End of December, or something like that. Would you like to meet to, to go to Paris? I have friends, I have a Paris suit. It would be a great opportunity. He says, are you going to pay for my hotel? No, I'm not going to pay for my hotel. <laughs> So then I said, I went to Alec, Alex, Alex Cranton. Alec, would you like, Alec is the associate dean at the University of Iowa. Are you come with me to Paris? Paris? Europe? Are you kidding me? Alec had never been to Europe, and you know, this was really very strange. The third choice was Lisa. I went to Lisa and I said, Lisa, I will tell you something. Would you like to come with me to Paris? But please tell your mother. Ask your mother first. You know, why? You call me old-fashioned, that's fine. I mean, this is with a woman, I mean, it's a different story. You have to ask mom. Here she is in the audience. <laughs> so Lisa says, I pretended that I asked my mother, but of course I'm coming to Paris. <laughs> so I arranged for her to give a seminar. I gave a seminar at the University of Paris. We were there for four days and she absolutely hated it. It was rainy, I loved it, you know. Wow. Fall in Paris, are you kidding me? Uh, you can hear Le Fay Moor of, uh, you know, of Brevet very nicely. You know, at least I didn't like it. Also, there were terrorist activities and they had closed all the bathrooms so the ship couldn't go to any public bathroom. <laughs> the third or fourth day, I said, shall we go out to dinner? And that was December 16th, 1987, and that was our first date. Uh, the rest is history. When we finally decided to get married in March of 88, I went to Reclitis. Reclitis was shocked. You couldn't do that anymore today. I mean, it would have been a scandal today. Nobody would have allowed you. Rex Reclitis was very smart. Immediately he asked uh, to be placed as the chairman of the committee of her thesis so that she didn't have to start a new thesis. The thesis went very well. He gave her a hard time of the thesis defense, as he should have done, because, I mean, you know, otherwise we have had problems. And you know the rest of the history and so on. So that changed my life. The pre lisa period was a period of, I would say, good work, but the post lisa period is a period of absolutely incredible work. And, and we worked together on many, many subjects. And this changed my life because I stopped doing animal experiments, as you know. I never killed an animal since then because it's very strict about it. The most we can do is cells. Uh, but, but I believe it as well. But it changed my life in many, many other ways. And then, of course, Ten years later, we decided that awards and things are fine, but two little kids are also great. So Kathy and Alexis came, and Alexis for the Greeks, Alexi for the Americans. I will never explain that. Alexis is in Greek, is Alexis is a male name, but in English, it's not. 
So when we write Christmas, Christmas uh, cards, we always have Christmas cards for the Greeks, where his name appears as Alexis, and Christmas cards for the Americans and the Europeans, where the name appears as Alex. Um, I am absolutely delighted to see all of you here today. Uh, what can I say? For me, I mean, having people like Jennifer come back after, it's, and it's exactly what she told you, after 25 years. Christy answered, Natalie, I thank you for coming. All the young ones, Zach and Jay and Bob Parker, we solved so many problems together. And also people with whom I haven't worked together, but I've written together. Like Ali Kudem Hussain, who is one of the brightest stars at Harvard Medical School, with whom we met through Bob and through Mike. And, and now we write some of the, the most powerful papers in the field. And, and many others. And, and, you know, I have all the names, and I wanted to mention all the names, but I don't want to overdo it. Okay, so we'll go half an hour. You know how much I love you. There were some very big surprises. Lisa was telling me who was coming, but not all the names. After a few weeks, he said, no, I cannot tell you anymore. There was a surprise. And of course, for me, it was a surprise to see Rachel Lennox Mace. Rachel was a 1982 graduate. She was in the laboratory. It was a love at first sight. We worked extremely well together. I remember from which high school she graduated and so on. She became effectively professor of pediatrics at Vanderbilt, and we have kept together. I saw her for the first time after 25 years. But every year we exchange cards and so on. So I would, if you ever need uh, a Johnny Maqueda for Purdue, maybe you can use me also for Purdue, you know. And Mark Mahani, and so many others. Another one that was a surprise to see again was Hunter Lawton. I didn't expect Hunter to be here. Uh, this is now at Harvard. And many others that cannot be here for other reasons, like a grow up who just had the last, uh, what is that, Grand Peppermer. She gave birth just seven days ago. I want to close with uh, two or three other things. Bob and Mike have been my brothers, along with an Italian brother called Paolo Colombo, who cannot be here today because in Italy, you know, in Europe, if it's August, you're on vacation. You're not in the United States. Yeah. And rush for purpose. Come on. I understand that. Bob is my Italian brother. But Mike and, uh, and Bob have been brothers for me. I mean, through the very early days, we had no clue whatsoever that someday we would be making the decisions for the land materials world. No idea. We were three kids, one Canadian, one from upper New York State, and one from Greece trying to go through the MIT program and learn. But we had the enthusiasm about helping patients. That I remember since those early days. Of the three of us, Mike was always the more mathematical. I mean, his mathematical background was exceptional. I was not the mathematical one. I don't know how I turned out to be the other way. Bob was always the quiet one. All of us who were playing ping pong in the basement, all of us were going to cabbage. Cabbage, of course, for us. You know that by now. And they have done so well. You know, for Bob Langer, I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, the Millennium Prize, which is the equivalent of the Nobel Prize for Technology, 1.2 million euros, no, 800 million, 800,000 euros, which he got from the president of uh, Finland a few weeks ago, is the combination of activities. I mean, you know, the, the man is, has received everything. He's going to go for the Prince of Asturias Award in a few months in Oviedo that he will get from the King of uh, Spain and so many others, 14 honorary doctorates and so on. For me, it's still Bob. Still Bob, and I can give him a really hard time and he doesn't dress very well. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike Sefton is my nemesis. Mike Sefton is the one who, when I say something, he will look at me and say, because you better read biology, that's not very correct, okay? <laughs> and, uh, Mike, as you probably know, this year got the Killam Prize from Canada. A hundred thousand, I would say Canadian dollars, but these days Canadian dollars and American dollars are the same thing, which is the highest prize in Canada. He's a member of the Royal Society and so on. What a pleasure to have friends like that. And I'm telling you, the rest of you, the young ones of you, look around the table. Twenty years ago, you would be in the same situation. Why? Because you can do it and because you want to do it. That's it. Why do we want to do it? Because in my field, in our field, we want to help patients. And I've said that millions of times. We don't do what we do for the money. You're wrong if you think that. 
We do it because we want to help patients. We want to see these poor women who take injections one a week, a week for multiple sclerosis and suffer for days to be able to take a pill and go around. Pop solves little kids that are burned over 60 and 70 percent of their body by creating new tissues. Mike has given tremendous solutions for diabetes, totally new solutions based on encapsulated beta cells and so on. And that's why you do it. Why you do it. Rob Scott was telling you earlier about the intra intraocular lens. When I was working with Alcon on the intraocular lens, I helped in a minor possibility in development, in improvement of the lenses. You know where it hit me? When all people came to me and they said, thank you for what you did to my vision. Because of you, it was not because of me, it was millions of people, hundreds of people that were working in the project. Because of you, I can see 2020 again. You gave me back my vision from the rest of my life. So what is it that excites us? That's what excites me. That's what excites Bob and Mike and all of you in the audience who are much more in the biomedical sciences. And those of you who are chemical sciences, with the tremendous and energy problems that we have, I think what excites you is that you are going to hopefully solve the energy problem. Coming back to the end, Purdue has been a very, very good place for me, there is no doubt. And I think they should be very proud that many of the people who spoke to Gay today, they are here are Purdue graduates. UT, of course, should be equally excited because I think there are 77, hopefully there are 77 PhDs here. And I think 59 of them were from Purdue, or due to the Purdue Times, and 18 from UT. I don't know how I did it, maybe the professors didn't, my colleagues didn't understand that the students are graduating so fast. But a lot of students have graduated already, have become professors, because it's a wonderful environment, it's a scholarly environment where everything is available to you, where you can do great work. So this is really uh, my final message, thanks to Purdue, thanks to the University of Texas. It's not Purdue's blame. There came a time when both Lisa and I were getting a little bit bored with Indiana, all due respects. And uh, we decided that it was time to move. Texas and then went after us, Rice went after us, Georgia Tech went after us. In fact, uh, as you probably know, I was a finalist for Dean of Engineering at Georgia Tech. Dan Giddens got the offer. Uh, it was announced to me while we were on Maui on vacations for the US-Japan meeting with Bob Langer. I was devastated. I thought that was the end of the world. Ten days later, Rebecca Richards Gordon, January of 2002, calls me and says, I'm calling you on behalf of me and Georgiou. We would like you to come down to the University of Texas and consider the possibility of moving. Uh, would you like to? Well, yeah, I didn't want to say yes, 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 please, please, please. <laughs> Yeah, I would like to consider it. We called immediately the big chef, who is my mother-in-law, and uh, mother-in-law said, oh, Austin is even better than Houston. I think uh, you should consider it. The rest is history. Uh, Ken Diller picked me up from the airport in a pickup truck. He took my luggage and he put it in the back of the pickup truck. <laughs> I never told him that that was not a very good first impression for somebody. <laughs> but, uh, you see, he still wears however a bow tie, so he is a good dresser. <laughs> Never <laughs> And at UT I've seen a totally different world, and as I said, I mentioned already the names. But again, I want to go back. It's the mentors, it's the friends. Another great friend was Rena Bizzi. With Rena we were postdocs. We could never imagine we would meet again. We were, she was actually a graduate student, I was a postdoc at Clark Collins Laboratory. And here we are, 35 years later, she's the Peter Flon professor, for those of you who are from UT, you recognize what Peter Flon, who Peter Flon is. Peter Flon professor of bioengineering at the University of Texas in San Antonio, and I'm delighted she's here. And, uh, you know, I don't want to single out those that went to academia. Rob Scott and John Clear and all the others, I love you equally, and Lucy Hare, I love you as equally well as those who went to academia. But people like Tony Nichols and Chris Bowman and Chris Tiansen, I feel very proud of what you've done. And people like Alajin Arsiman and Surya Pagal and so on, it's part of my being. Don't be so negative with me when sometimes I say that I love the academics. But allow them to be very practical and to do things that will help the world. 
A few last comments. I'm not a pharmaceutical scientist, but I'm so delighted to see uh, Vince Lee and Kina Park in the audience. Most of you don't know them as well as others. There was this incredible pharmaceutical scientist called Joe Robinson, with whom I was a very good friend, University of Wisconsin. We lost him two years ago at the age of 65, 67. And <clears throat> these two men are two of his former PhDs. Uh, Keenan has now the show called the professorship that I had ever do. And Vince, of course, is a grand professor, both of them. These two men run the three most powerful uh, journals in the field, Journal of Control Release, Advanced Drug Delivery Reviews, and Pharmaceutical Research. So I'm delighted they are in the audience. And I'm delighted about all the young ones that are here, even the undergraduates. Alice Strenshard, who is going in September to Stanford, Monica Richards, who is staying with us, and of course Barbara. Talking to you about Barbara Eckert, I mean, I think it's déjà vu all over again. I think I'm back in the days of Jennifer Dolorisso. For you and for all of you, Jennifer Curtis. When Barbara joined my group, as at the end of her freshman year, I could see the spark. I gave her a difficult problem. At the end of the summer of the freshman year, we had a patent. My partner was assigned to a company. We've been together for two years. Her dad left. He's not here to hear it. She's the daughter of John Edgar, but she reminds me of the only others. So all of you, thank you, both from the bottom of my heart. Thank you to Laura Serra. Thank you to Irma Sanchez, who came from Monterey for this. These were the so-called visitors who came and stayed and did the PhDs with me. They graduated from the Technological in Monterey or from the Universitat de uh, Barcelona, Barcelona, so if you're Catalan, you say Barcelona, you say Barcelona. <laughs> they can't say but they're my kids. Thank you all. It has been a pleasure. I love you all. I love my family. I thank my sisters in Greece, my sister Luisa, my half-sister Maria, couldn't come here today. Uh, my nephews, Vasilis and uh, Katerina, and of course, Alice, and my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, Pat and Tony, who are here, and of course, Lisa and Katya and Alexis. Thank you very much. <laughs>